Hello everybody. Happy Sunday. What is going on? It's Mike Deary and we're hanging out and doing a live lesson. So welcome. Leonard, how you doing? Uh, everybody chime in and say hi. Ricky, what's going on, buddy? Uh, good to see you guys starting to pile in here. Um, make sure the sound and lights and everything and the audio looks good. So someone chime in there and just let me know if everything's looking cool. But Really excited to be hanging out with you guys today. Um, you know, this is obviously the new norm is to be doing everything inside and, and hanging out. Uh, so we're gonna roll with it as we do. And what I wanted to talk about today for doing this live lesson, okay, cool, awesome. Uh, we're gonna be talking about jamming to JL, awesome buddy. Uh, so yeah, just real quick, I just wanna say what an awesome time it is to be able to do this type of thing. It's obviously such a weird time in our history of what's going on with coronavirus and everybody kind of being told to stay inside. And while that's all super frustrating, super awkward, super scary, um, the ability for us to do this type of stuff with such high quality and connect uh, is a real you know, lifesaver in my opinion. You know? So I'm really excited that we could do this type of thing and um, so yeah, so let's just make the best of it. And one of the things I'm gonna be doing a lot more of these, the reason why is because you know we're all being forced more or less to be staying inside more. And even though it's coming up on spring and everybody's wanting to be outside, um, which we still should be, but it's never a better time to sit at home, play your guitar and have some fun. You know, everyone's needing to find new ways to occupy themselves, entertain themselves. You could do that by sitting on a couch and watching TV all day, or you can go pick up your guitar and get better at it. And that's my preferred, <laughs> my preferred thing. So, um, cool, Chevy. Chevy truck. I love that name. Uh, I got a little chat window here, so type in, say hi, and all that other stuff. So again, I'm gonna be talking about how to jam along to backing tracks is my main topic today. But whenever I do these live lessons, it's for you. So if you guys have questions and topics and other things you want me to cover, chime in, say it in the chat, and I'll cover it as best I can in real time here, because I'm here for you guys. This is all about you know, helping you get better at guitar, helping you learn and get better at the things that you're struggling with. Uh, but the reason I wanted to talk about jamming along the backing tracks is because it's one of the most fun things that I personally find from guitar playing and through all the hundreds of students I've taught throughout my teaching career, everybody always has so much fun with it. The reason why too is because when you're jamming along, you're not really striving to do anything specific. In other words, if your goal is to learn a song, you have a very defined thing that you're trying to do. And that's a great, a great aspect of learning guitar but it doesn't leave as much room for discovery, for just finding happy accidents, and for things just to kind of happen as they will organically. When you're practicing to jamming and, and jamming along the backing tracks, it leaves this wide open template where it's a great way for you to practice licks and things that you're learning, but it also leaves this room for, hey, I don't know what's gonna happen, we're just gonna have fun. And you'd be surprised how quickly those hours just start flying by when you really get the hang of jamming along the backing tracks or anything, you know, and we're gonna talk about what exactly is a backing track and what makes a backing track and all that other stuff. Um, let me turn up my vocal a little here. So, but anyways, that's one of the reasons why I like covering this so much is because it's, it's one of the best ways just to soak up time and get so much better at playing um, than just, you know, sitting around and not focusing on anything specific. So let's talk about what is a backing track. A backing track, a jam track, you've probably heard these terms before. And they're essentially just a looped progression or guitar riff um, that you could practice jamming and improvising to. You could practice soloing, your lead lines, there's all these little things that you could practice to. And pretty much, to be honest, anything can be considered a backing track even a song that you like listening to, you could utilize that song as a backing track. Uh, but the elements that really make for a good backing track is something that's looped, and in my opinion, something that doesn't have vocals. Because if you're listening to vocals, it's really gonna kinda 
you're going to be listening to melodies. Hey, Frank, how you doing, buddy? Um, local. Awesome. I love it. So when you're listening to a song and you hear all these other elements going on, like maybe there's already a lead guitar part <clears throat> or if there's a vocal melody that somebody's singing, your ear is going to start picking up the melodies that are going on there. And that's going to subconsciously or consciously influence what you're going to play or maybe try to play on your guitar. A backing track in its simplest form is just a guitar chord progression or a bass progression that is just playing either a certain few notes or a certain few chords and loops it. Because now all you have is this one foundation of a chord and maybe some harmony or something like that with, within the chord that allows you to have a much more open slate and you're not influenced by other elements that are going on. So there's a lot, a lot of backing tracks. I'm gonna show you resources on Super Guitar Licks and Rock Guitar Power, the two sites that I run uh, that have a ton of backing tracks. I usually create most of them, uh, but I have some others that were made from some other people and so forth. The track I was just jamming to is a, a backing track called, um, what did I call this? Funky Guitar Groove. So I got a whole bunch of cool tech set up here. So what we're gonna do is call up one of my sites here. This is Rock Guitar Power. Let's go to Super Guitar Licks. So if you go to Super Guitar Licks in the navigation here, there is a link for jam tracks, and that's gonna bring you to this page, all right? And the backing track I was jamming to here, if you scroll down and go to additional jam tracks, is one called Funky Guitar Groove Chorus. So this was a guitar groove that I was writing to. Hey, Mark, welcome from New Orleans. Good to see you on, buddy. So what I, what I was doing with this track if I just play the rhythm real quick. So that's the backing track I was jamming along to. It's in F. I always get stuck, yeah, Chevy truck. We're, I got you, buddy. We're gonna talk about how to get unstuck and how to use scales and licks over this. We'll get there for sure. So what I do when I create a backing track is just find a rhythm that I like. You know, it's usually a song or a riff I might write a full song to, or it's just a little progression that I like. But what's important is that you keep it simple and then you loop it. Now, I have a whole, I'm in my recording studio right now, so I have all the toys to do this really high, high quality and professionally. One of the best things that you could use at home to create your own backing tracks is just a looping pedal. I have one of those hooked up to my rig right now, and if I literally take that riff I just played and loop it, that's gonna give me a backing track. So while I have a lot of backing tracks on my sites, you could find backing tracks on YouTube or anywhere, what I really love telling people to do is create your own backing tracks. I'm gonna do a different live lesson on that at some other point, but if we just take our, our groove that we did, and I'm gonna do a loop on this. So now what you could hear is I got a backing track. I could go ahead and jam it along to this. Okay. Now what I like to add to make it a little bit more fun is drums and bass then you really got a full backing track that has a solid rhythm element with the drums. Your bass is gonna outline and get that low end in there so you have a full rhythm section, and then just your guitar chord progression, all right? So when we look at this groove called Funky Guitar Groove, um, I'm gonna play it from my phone, but it's literally this first one right here that you're seeing. So if I go ahead and play that, this is, that one groove looped for about five minutes. Because the other thing that's really nice about a backing track that you want to do, Charles from Texas, what's up buddy, welcome. So uh, you want to try to loop it for like at least four or five minutes. Because the last thing you want to do is if you're in the middle of a groove and you're having fun and you're rocking out, you don't really want to stop and be like, oh man, 
that's track ended, you gotta go hit play again. So the longer you could loop something, the longer it just goes and you could practice to it, all right? So a good backing track, four to five minutes, let it loop, all right? But if I play that groove, oh, let me tie it into my main audio system here. Come on. All right, here we go. So this guy's just gonna loop for four or five minutes, but what you'll hear now is that it's got, there we go. Alright, there we go. Sam from Florida, welcome buddy. So that's gonna loop and now we got bass drums and we got a full nice fun rhythm to and, and backing truck to jam along to. So the first thing that you want to know to have fun and work with backing tracks, there's one main thing you need to know. What key signature is the backing track in? Okay? That is the absolute critical thing that you need to know before you start jamming along to a backing track. Okay? You got to know what key is it in. All right? Because that is what's going to dictate what scale and licks that you use. All right? We're gonna show you how to work with any backing track and take the same licks and apply them to all the tracks that you want, all right? Uh, but the first thing you gotta know is what key is it in. That's the other thing that on both of my sites here, if we look at Super Guitar Licks, you could tell for every, um... oh nice, I love it, you guys are hanging out, cool. John, welcome. Um, so, when you look at these descriptions of these backing tracks, it'll tell you what key it's in, and it's also even gonna tell you what uh, fret to start your minor pentatonic scale on. We're gonna get into that in a second. But the absolute first thing you need to know is what key is my backing track in? So this first one, as we see here that we were jamming on, it says, here's a super funky groove to rip some solos over. It's in the key of F minor. Okay, so someone write in it, what note or fret on the big string is an F. There's two places that we can easily access the note F on our guitar if we start on the big E string. Someone type it in and see if you can guess it. The answer's right on screen, so let's not think too hard here. Thanks, Ricky. Awesome. So, if you look at the first fret on the guitar, that note is F. So if I say that, hey, my guitar backing track is in the key of F and it's in F minor, that helps me know where I can now start my scale that I use to play all my licks with. And what scale do we use? What do we got there? Beetle Lee Bailey. Beetle Bean. <laughs> What's going on? I love people's names. It's so fun to try to like, I've seen some hilarious names out there. Okay, so if we take out this thing here, let's look at our king of all guitar scales. That's this guy right here. Bar none, the most popular and useful, helpful scale in guitar is the minor pentatonic scale. The beautiful thing about guitar is that it's a very pattern-oriented instrument, okay? You could learn one thing in one place of the neck and move it up or down and all you have to do is change where you play it. That's what makes guitar a lot easier than people think, and especially lead playing licks and all that in soloing. Because if I learn a lick or even a scale, and I know it's in the key of F, okay, I could play that in the key of F. If then I find a backing track that's in the key of A, all I need to do is find out where's the note A and then play that same scale. Now I could play and jam on a backing track that's in the key of A minor. So the first thing you gotta ask yourself, what key am I in? Where's that note start? If I'm in F minor, I know I need to start on the first fret or the 13th fret on guitar is also an F. So I have these two areas that I could now play my scale with. And now, let's go ahead and hear how this sounds. So all I'm gonna do is play the minor pentatonic scale that you see on screen. 
on the first fret, and then we're gonna go up to the 13th fret. Okay, let's hear how that sounds over this backing track that we were jamming along to here. Simple, but you could already hear how what I'm playing works. It sounds like it connects. It might not be, you know, the most amazing thing in the world out there, but still, it's a start. And depending on where you're at, if you're just picking up guitar and starting, then it's that simple. If you're getting further along, now you can use licks and, you know, solo lines that are within that pattern that now get you to be doing more of a jamming type of thing, all right? So now that I know that this this groove and backing track is in F, I know I have these two places to jam along to, all right? The other thing that you need to know is, am I in major or minor, okay? Most, a lot of the time you're in minor, okay? Blues uh, is, a, is a form of minor in a sense, or you know, the minor, let's just put it this way, the minor pentatonic scale will work if you're in A blues or F blues, your minor pentatonic scale is gonna be one of the first go-to scales, all right? If you wanna spice it up, we have the blues scale, that guy right there. It's basically a minor pentatonic scale. There's just a raised uh, fourth, okay? Or flatted fifth, depending on when you look at it. And so if you wanna sound more bluesy when you're jamming, you just use that scale. So let's try that out against our backing track. Simple, let's go up to the 13th fret. So again, keeping it very simple, but now you can hear how I have more of a blues sound that I'm playing. And I'm just going up and down the scale, okay? The next part is where it starts getting to be a lot more fun. You now have this pattern and set box of notes that you know will work. The beautiful thing about this is that any note you play within these patterns will most likely sound good over the backing track, as long as you start it in the right place for that key signature. Okay, let's just take this simple idea and take it to a different key signature. Okay, so if we look at our site here, let's take a look at another groove. All right, rock groove in A. All right, if you read the description, this is a faster rock rhythm in A minor. Use the minor pentatonic scale starting at the fifth fret or the 15th fret. All right, so let's go ahead and listen to this one and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna just play our scale pattern up and down on A instead of F this time. Let's call this sucker up, here we go. Okay, so again, you can see how I'm just taking the same scale, only starting on the first fret, I moved it up to the fifth fret. Because at the fifth fret is A, my backing track is in A, now everything's glued and sounds really good together, okay? Now, there's a difference if I were to play an A major, 
then I'd want to shift it up and use a different scale. There's a couple options there. You could either use the A major pentatonic, or you could use what's called the relative minor of A. All right, and that's another theory concept. I won't go too into that now because it's kind of a different lesson altogether. But the main thing is, most of the backing tracks you'll find here, at least on Rock Guitar Power or Super Guitar Licks, uh, and let me show you them on Rock Guitar Power. And by the way, how's everybody doing? Does anybody have any questions on this? Is it all making sense? Give me some feedback. All right, so if we go to Rock Guitar Power, uh, when we come here, you can see in the navigation there's a page called Guitar Backing Tracks, all right? It's very similar. You'll find a lot of the same tracks on here. Um, but when we come to this site, same idea, all right? All of these tracks are going to tell you what key they're in and where to start your minor pentatonic scale. Again, it's such a critical scale that you always want to know where I can use this scale, and that'll get you going on jamming and improvising. If you already know some licks, then the, fun, the most fun thing to do with these and the thing that will find you get you the most benefit, cool, um, is to try to just move them along. Move them to a different, you know, part of the neck and move it to a different key signature. Try it over a totally different rhythm and chord progression because you'll find that most licks that you know and learn are going to be transferable. You can learn them in one area on one groove and just say, all right, we're going to do something totally different and it'll still work, all right? So let's now take a look at a couple different lick ideas, all right? And just so you know, Rock Guitar Power and Super Guitar Licks are just jam-packed with teaching you licks and solos and, and all that other stuff. Uh, Super Guitar Licks is a site, you know, for teaching guitar licks. So if you're brand new to it, there's a lot of programs that we have here um, that are all about teaching licks, all right? If you're brand new to playing, Licks, 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 is a program that's going to teach you from the fundamentals if you've never soloed before. Licks 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 was a program created by my old guitar teacher, Bob Prong. Uh, cheers to Bob if you're hanging out. Um, but it literally will teach you how to take a very simple idea and build on it so that you know how to create more elaborate sales and leads, or solos, <laughs> solos and lead lines. Expanding the fretboard is going to help you get outside of the penton pentatonic box. All right, that's going to help you learn the thing that happens with this scale pattern for the minor pentatonic scale is that once you learn it and get good at it, you start feeling boxed in. All right, then you start asking yourself, how do I get out of this? Expanding the fretboard is going to teach you how to do that and use other parts of the guitar neck. Okay, and then there's a lot of other things here too for chord techniques. Whiplash is all the fancy stuff, and guitar styling is going to teach you how to play over different styles of music. All right. Any in a scale. Mark, yes, I will answer that in a second. Um, and then one other thing I wanted to show on Rock Guitar Power, uh, the, the best program here, well, there's a bunch here. Uh, for Rock Guitar Power, if we go to our guitar courses, we have a couple courses that are super helpful, all right? If you're brand new to playing, soloing and lead playing is a great course to check out. That's going to, again, teach you the fundamentals of using the minor pentatonic scale and using other scale patterns similar to get you soloing and using more of the neck. If you're a little more advanced or if you just want to challenge, the Guitar Pro Jam is the king of all courses, in my opinion, for, for really having fun with this. This is going to be a program that teaches you how to start with a simple groove learn some licks relative to that groove, and put it all together for an actual solo. The really cool thing about this program is that we have backing tracks in different tempos. That's the other really critical thing if you are working on improving your skills. If you have a means to slow up or speed down your backing track, that's super, super helpful because it's gonna help you work on licks at a slower pace and then you could slowly increase them. So on the Guitar Pro Jam, what we do is take every guitar groove or backing track and play it at three different tempos. And you also learn how to do it with and without the rhythm section. So 
we teach you how to play the actual chord progression or groove. Then you can learn to solo over it. The other thing that I like telling people, if you're looking on learning backing tracks and wanting to use them to solo over, it's so fun to jump right into actually learning to solo and just start you know, playing leads over them. But it is absolutely critical to learn the rhythm if you can. Learn the groove that's actually being played um, because it'll help you understand what you can do that'll sound even better on soloing. It's a more advanced thing, but don't skip out on learning the actual rhythms that are part of your, jet, of your backing track, okay? But on Rock Guitar Power, the Guitar Pro Jam, uh, again, it's gonna give you three different tempos for each backing track. We're gonna teach you each backing track. So in other words, this is showing you how to play the chords. We teach you the rhythm. We teach you how to do this over a slower tempo. And we always have a whole solo that we create here. And then what we do is break down that solo lick by lick. And then you're gonna learn how to play it and tie it all together, okay? So again, this is one of my favorite programs that helps you really establish yourself and understand lead playing, jamming from a ground up level, all right? And it shows you how you build upon everything. Licks, licks, licks on Super Guitar Licks is the same idea. Learning bass line, do the song. Awesome, I love it, Ricky, cool. Which song, by the way? Uh, learning the bass lines to the songs. Oh, all of them. I love it. That's a great point, actually, too. Um, the other thing that's really good to do if you're using your ear, let's say you're trying to jam along to a backing track. Um, who is we? Nice. Um, so, in other words, if you're learning a backing track or if you're learning a song, one of the best elements to listen for is the bass line, if it's there. Because the bass keeps it simple. You're only playing one note at a time on bass, and you're usually outlining the roots of the chords that are happening. So when you hear a bass line, if you could listen for it, it helps you pick it out and use your ear. Quiet that up a little bit. It helps you, use your, helps you to use your ear to figure out what is the actual chord progression, all right? So, but don't skimp out on the rhythm. Learn the rhythm, learn the chords. It'll help you have more fun with the track, okay? So anyways, those are some of the resources where you could find plenty of licks to learn. But let's take a couple examples, okay? One of the things that I love doing and going to is on Super Guitar Licks. And by the way, I do have special deals set up today. I'll announce those later for both Super Guitar Licks and Rock Guitar Power. I have links to get you guys deals. If you're not already members to those, I do have links so you guys could join at a discounted rate just to help everybody out. We need more fun in our lives right now. And if you're gonna sit home and play guitar, I'm here to help. So anyways, if we go to Super Guitar Licks, there is a series of blog posts or lessons that I do called Quick Licks. These are totally free. If you sign up and do our free programs, you'll get these through your email. If you wanna check them out, they're on the, the guitar blog. If you go to guitar blog here and you search through the lessons that are on here, you'll find things called quick licks. If you wanna get there quickly, I'm trying to get a search bar at the top of the page, but basically if you go to any, um, any single lesson here, you'll find a search bar at the bottom uh, or at the top right, depending on the device. But if I come down here and you see the search bar and I just type in quick licks, let me get this thing working here, there we go. This is a way for you to easily find all of the, the quick licks lessons that we have. And these are just gonna, they are what they say, they're quick licks. They're gonna be looking at one simple line or, or a lick, and it's gonna teach it to you, all right? They're just usually two to four bars long, and they're always played and taught to a backing track. So if we go to quick licks four, this is one of the ones that we're gonna look at today, all right? So if we come here and we find quick licks four, scroll up a little bit more so we can get right into the lesson. This is gonna be uh, a quick lick, and I'll bring this up on screen. I'm just showing you this here so you can see how to get to it. You got our backing track here. You got an example. It tells you what key we're in, and then we have our tab. So I'm gonna close out this guy here and bring up our actual click lick. So this is the lick that we're gonna do, and we're actually playing this to the, to the backing track we just jammed along to, all right? 
So let's take a look at what we got going on with this lick. So if we look at the first bar, very simple repetitive line, all right? 10, eight, 10, eight. So 10th fret, eighth fret on the, the little E string, 10th fret, eighth fret on the big E, on the little B string. And I'm just gonna keep repeating that. So before we go into anything else, thanks JL, I love it, good to hear. So before we do anything else, let's just hear <clears throat> how it sounds playing this repetitive lick over the backing track, okay? Uh, again, I'm gonna use my cell phone, but it's literally just taking, hitting play on that rock groove in A. So we're gonna listen to that. I'll probably have to pump this back into. Studio. Okay, so. Here we go. Okay, so there you go. Very simple. I'm playing eighth notes. So it's nothing you know crazy fast at the moment, but it's simple. And what you're trying to do is a repetitive pattern and just get it to lock in with the rhythm. All right, when I hear that groove going on, I just wanna keep that repetitive thing going and make it sound like I'm just jamming along. Now, what's fun about this lick is it's one of my favorites because it's one of the licks that Zach Wilde does. Zach Wilde was Ozzy's guitar player for years and just one of the most amazing guitar players ever, in my opinion. His other band, Black Label Society, is just, you know, just crushing it. Um, anyways, he's always been one of my guitar heroes, if you will. He does this lick, of course, at lightning speeds, but if you take this simple idea... and you get it up to doing 16th notes or even faster, you really get some energy and you get just pure rock soloing, all right? Listen to hear how it sounds if I go from eighth notes and then if I can, get it up to playing 16th notes, all right? Check it out. So it's a simple idea, it's a simple lick, but it's got so much power behind it because it's just effective, all right? Let's talk about where does this lick come from, okay? Because the other thing that's really, really important when you're learning licks and when you're learning to jam along the backing tracks, you wanna know where's home base. Where does this lick sit in the grand scheme of like everything that you know already? We know we're in the key of A, so if we play our A minor pentatonic scale starting on the fifth fret, watch this. I ended up on the eighth fret. The last two frets I played were fifth fret and eighth fret. This lick goes 10-8, 10-8. So you might be asking yourself, why does this work over this groove, okay? Now, if you were to extend the minor pentatonic scale up, or if you were used, gonna use the C major pentatonic pattern, then it's part of that, that pattern. Basically, just to keep it simple, these notes are just an extension of that box pattern. If you want to apply this to any other key signature, then all you need to do is remember when you get to the end of your minor pentatonic scale, slide up two frets, and there's your home base for this lick. The other thing that's fun is if I just take this first bar and just this repetitive lick, when I'm ready to change it up and when I'm ready to get out of that lick or that groove, you could slide right back into going down the minor pentatonic. Watch, in other words. <laughs> And 
It's that simple. And now I have a little bit of a solo or a lead line. It's not just a repetitive lick. It becomes a little bit of a, of a solo or a phrase. <laughs> All right, listen to it against the backing track. Okay, see how everything just connects and it sounds really tight? So again, it's a simple idea. Don't make this more difficult than it needs to be. Have fun with the simple side of it. Get good at that. Use your metronome to practice at a slow tempo and be able to get faster with it, okay? We've done other lessons on that that I'll send links to if you have questions or you know, find them on the site or I'll do another future one on how to use a metronome to build speed. But if you know how to do that, then you could know what is my goal tempo? Where does my tempo of my song need to be? And that'll give you an idea of where you need to get your proficiency up with a certain link that you're working on. Anybody have any questions on that? Is this all making sense? Sounding good? Okay, so the next part of this is how do we then expand on it, okay? Let's look at the second bar of this lick, all right? So we started with 10-8, 10-8. And now what I'm gonna do is 10, 8, 12, 8. Oops. Sorry, yeah, 10, 8, 12, 8. So it ends with 10, 8 on, good, Ricky, cool. So it ends on 10, 8 on the B string, but it adds going to the 12th fret. So if I go, Now I have a longer lick. It's more of a complex idea, but I didn't do a lot of complexity to add to it. It's just adding one little element to it, all right? What you could do now is take this little lick and now go back and forth between playing the two of them. So in other words, And if you notice, when I end this lick, it ends on the 10th fret of the B string. And that is the note A. What key am I in? A. That's why when I end this lick, everything sounds complete. Everything sounds like it's finished. And that's one of the things that you want to achieve when you're practicing jamming over backing tracks. If you're gonna practice a lead line or a solo line, what really sounds what makes you sound like a polished player is if you complete your sentences, okay? Just like you were speaking, if you just stop in the middle of a sentence and don't finish it, everyone's like, you're not done. What, what, you're gonna be waiting for something. It's the same exact idea when you're a guitar player and you're trying to entertain an audience or yourself. You wanna finish a sentence. So when I start a line, That note there has a lot of tension. It doesn't sound finished. But if I go, you hear how much more finished that sounds, okay? So knowing where your root notes are of your song and how to finish a lick or a phrase so that when the song or the backing track starts, you're usually gonna start a backing track on the one or the first chord of your, of your key signature. If you could line up the note of your solo lines with that note or the first note of the chord sequence, you're really gonna sound done. You're gonna sound finished and it becomes a complete sentence, okay? Uh, let's see, we got a question. Is the first minor third and fourth, isn't it? It's the first. Minor third and fourth, isn't it? Uh, as far as the chord you mean, or Bleon, I think I got your, if that's, sorry if that's how to pronounce your name. Um, it's the first minor third and fourth. So if you're looking for a chord, uh, the, a, a minor chord is made up of a first, a minor third, and a fifth, um, if that's what you're asking. Um, but knowing what your key signature is, is the simplest way to think about it. I know I'm in the key of A, so when I do a solo or a lead line, I wanna end on A. Let's hear how this sounds now if I take this lick 
repeat it, and make sure that I end my phrase on that 10th fret on the B string. All right, check it out. Love that last one. Hopefully you get the idea, okay? Can you hear how that really connects and it sounds like a solo line? But the cool thing is you could take that lick and just keep repeating it because the other thing that people really get into when you're sitting there jamming along and, and if you really repeat something for a while, if you're really locked in and it sounds good, people go nuts over that stuff because, and it doesn't hurt to kind of give yourself some of that like, uh, you know, get some, get some face in there, you know, it's like. <laughs> You know, if you can catch people when they're just totally in the moment, that's, you know, they're making these faces like, oh, man, that dude's in it. You know, it's really fun to watch, but the, when you loop up a lick, it's really kind of allowing that lick to say, this is what I'm doing. I'm not just trying something. This is what I mean to do. So if you keep that going, it might sound repetitive for a first few seconds, but if you keep doing it, people are like, yes. And then it really helps to, to bring it on home by nailing that last note. You really gotta make sure if you're doing something really repetitive that you land on the right note at the right time because there's nothing worse than uh, you know ending on something that doesn't sound good. People remember the way you end stuff more than they remember what happens in the middle, okay? So in other words, if I jam this out. <laughs> Okay, you can hear how if you just keep that going, it just really, you know, it really kind of gets some energy. The energy builds up and it, it gets exciting to listen to. Uh, do I have the tab for facial? <laughs> Mark, uh, I'm going to shoot pictures of that. That's a fun one. Show me your best guitar face is the, is the best one, you know. You could probably pause any of my videos or anybody's guitar video. It's the funnest thing to do. And people would troll me like that on, on YouTube or I'd have a video of me playing and some, you know, some young kid trolling me who was like, take a screenshot while I'm mid like, this guy, oh, look at his face at 115, ha, ha, ha. No, it's funny, uh, but it, it, you know, those are the fun parts that kind of just, you know, you know you're really into it. If you're, if you're sitting there worried and looking all intense, it's not that much fun to watch. Uh, but when you're really into it, you know, don't worry about anything. There's a, uh, a master class that Carlos Santana does on masterclass.com. And he was talking about when he's, you know, he was watching one of his idols. I forget who it was. He just, just like, you know, the best players are sitting there when they're just all in it. They're sweating. They're snot running down their nose. And you're just like, yeah, something along those lines. It's, it's, it's so true. So anyways, uh, that's one of the concepts to take a simple idea and have fun. All right, let's look at one more lick. And again, if you guys have other questions or different topics, let me know. If this is helpful, let me know. Uh, what we're going to do now is jumping into Quick Licks number six, all right? And that's up on screen. Let me pull this up on the website real quick so you guys can see where it is. Um, let's go to Quick Licks number six. Hang on. All right. And actually, I'm going to do a quick interjection just to give a quick plug because that's one of the things I'm here to do for, too. I'm not going to hide that fact. So I got a couple discounts. I'll mention these later on, too. If you guys are wanting and don't already have access to Super Guitar Licks or Rock Guitar Power, I set up a couple special promos, superguitarlicks.com forward slash promo. Uh, for 35 bucks, you get access to the full site. Super Guitar Licks is a, uh, you know, kind of pay once, access everything. And for 35 bucks, you get access to everything we have on the site or everything that we will add in the future. So if you go to that link, you can join at that price and you'll have access forever and access to everything on there. Rock Guitar Power is normally a monthly membership site, which is $14.95 a month. 
Uh, I have a special promo for $97, one-time payment, you get access to everything, no monthly payments. Um, so I hooked both of those up for you guys. The links are there. I'll bring them up again later on at the end of the lesson. But again, if you're looking to join, those are up there and you could support and check it out there. Uh, but anyways, let's keep moving on. Thanks, Ricky. I love it. Uh, let's see. John, does Leonard Skinnerd Freebird song solo have so Good God, yes, it does. Ev Here's the funny thing about these licks. They are used everywhere. Every damn solo that you hear has some little component of these licks in there, all right? That's the fun thing about being a guitar player and learning this is that you realize learning these licks and then stringing them together is all that most of the most famous guitar players do. Most of the most famous solos use so many of the same licks. It's just a matter of stringing together in different ways, doing little variations, but that minor pentatonic scale is just used so much in every famous guitar solo you've ever heard, it's not even funny. And that's why I tell people, keep it simple. There's an endless amount of things that you could do with this scale, and you'll never get bored of it. Or if you are, you just gotta find a different way to approach playing it, all right? Now, there was a question, a couple other questions. Um, or there's one other one, uh, what was the question I knew I had to get back to? I don't want to leave it there. Hang on a second. Let me find it, because there was one question that I knew someone had that I was going to get back to. Uh, where was it? Where was it? In the scale. Uh, Mark earlier asked, can you start on any A in the scale? Absolutely. All right. Uh, what's important is... The notes are super helpful. The one note that you need to know, because the other thing that guitar players struggle with is they look at this guitar neck, all right, and they see six strings anywhere from 21 to 24 frets. That's a lot of notes. And the thing that makes guitar playing or a guitar different from, let's say, a piano is that you could have the same note in more than one place usually up to three places. In other words, if I want to play middle C on guitar, I could play it in those two different places. Okay, it's the same exact note, it's the same pitch. If you're on a piano, there's only one place to mid play middle C. You only have one option. So if you see a song and it tells you to play middle C, you only have one place you could play that note. On guitar, you could have up to three different places that you could play that exact same note. And that makes the idea of learning songs note for note or understanding what you're playing with the notes a lot more difficult, okay? And I am all about taking it to that level. The stuff I like to learn personally is really difficult and complex. To me, it's worth the challenge. But to keep it simple, if you know where that one note is that coincides with the key signature of your groove or your backing track, that's all you need to know. The thing that helps, again, keep it even more simple, learn or find that note on the big E string because that is where we are used to starting these scale patterns, okay? If you look at, let me go back to my minor pentatonic pattern here, all right? And my blue scale, I'll, I'll bring both of these up, okay? If you look at both of these patterns, there are notes that are circled, okay? Um, Good, awesome. So if we look at the minor pentatonic scale, this first note is an A, it's circled, because that is a root note. If I go to the next one that's circled, here's another A. Same note, octave higher. I, if I know that this note is A, that is a good place for me to say, hey, here's the root note of my scale. What you want to be careful about is saying, here's an A, so let me now start my pentatonic scale pattern right here. Watch what happens. Oop, that sounds wrong. The scale pattern that you see on screen is set to start on the big E string. That pattern works because of the way the strings are tuned, okay? Because when you have um, your notes here, 
the, the strings are tuned to fourths with the exception of the B string. Because that B string is a different interval than all the others, it throws the whole scale pattern off if you were to start it somewhere else, okay? It's a, you know, you get into a bunch of theory here. I could go down that road all day long, but I wanna keep it simple and hopefully just to explain the, you know, the idea. As long as you know your notes and you could really figure out how the patterns shift if you start on a different string, I'll go for it. It's only gonna make you a better player. It's a more advanced idea. I'm not gonna go crazy down that road in here unless enough people want me to. But the main idea is to keep it simple, know the root of your key, know the key signature of your groove, start the pentatonic scale on that note, all right, on the big E string, because then your patterns that you're really familiar with will always work, okay? But to answer the question, if you know the note, if you know there's a note A, it's always gonna work. You just gonna have to think about where does this now shift and how does it shift my pattern around, okay? Good question, and hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. It is cool to see everybody online. And it was funny too, because um, uh, I'll make, actually there's a couple of things I'll, I'll share right now because it's a fun point to talk about this. Um, you know, last, about a week ago when everyone was really starting to come into lockdown, um, my friend's band, uh, Tegan and the Tweeds called me up because they were doing a, they had a live gig, you know, scheduled and it's a big show for them and they had to cancel it. Before they canceled it, my friend Tegan asked me, hey, could we do a live stream? Because we we're going to cancel, but we want to tell everybody that, um, that uh, you know, we're, we're canceling, but we were going to do it online. We did that. I had six people in this studio, and we did a live stream with the full band, and it just it totally kicked ass. It went off great. And the next few days, when everyone was really forced or being encouraged to not do anything, Oh, you know, I have so many musician friends who are really, really getting, you know, getting kicked in the ass right now. It's, it's their, I have a lot of friends who that's what they do. That's their main income is gigging and playing out. And since they couldn't do that, they're all jumping on trying to stream live. And it was, it's been a lot of fun watching people do this. I'm actually going to make a video very soon talking about how to up your game and up your production quality for doing live streams. But even if it's not great, it is a very fun and interesting time to see how we could all collaborate. And one other thing I wanted to show actually before I go back to this lesson, uh, a couple days ago, uh, one of my friends, one of my old students um, made a video and showed how it started with a drummer. So if you go to my Facebook, uh, facebook.com forward slash Mike Deary, uh, you could probably find me just, and I, I posted this on Rock Guitar Power too, though. So if you go to the Rock Guitar Power or Super Guitar Licks Facebook page, you'll see this post. So it started with a drummer laying down a groove. All right. Literally, you know, the drummer started, he laid down a backing track of a groove. And he sent the video to Aaron, who is my student. He's the dude in the bottom right with the talk box in his mouth. He laid down a groove on top of the drum part. And then he sent that video to the bass player. Now the bass player has a video with drums and guitar in it. He lays down the bass, sends his video to the horn player. The horn player laid down some, some horn lines. And then I saw all this happening and I'm, I just pulled the videos. They're all friends of mine, or at least Aaron is. So I took the video. And again, this is the idea of a backing track. It was, it was literally just a guitar groove, well, it was a guitar and bass groove, and you know, now you have a full band. But I literally was able to take all the parts, they sent me the videos, and I could isolate each one in my fancy studio here. I really did what I could to improve the mix, but I added my part to it. This is the type of stuff that you know, people are becoming very creative and having a lot of fun there's nothing at all like collaborating and playing with people live and in person. There's an energy that happens if you're playing and interacting with other people live, one-on-one -on -one or in person. But this is a very cool alternative given the situation we're in right now. And I would advise or encourage anybody to try this out. Now, a lot of this is intimidating for people that are just starting. Just have fun with it. Just find a buddy, just share, share it back and forth or even just record yourself. Record yourself playing a rhythm for five minutes, all right? This is the simplest way to make a 
a video or a backing track is to just sit there, get your phone out, put it on record, and sit there and play an A minor chord for five minutes. You know, you don't need a looping pedal, you don't need anything crazy. Just sit there. And just jam along. Play that for five minutes on your phone, play it back, you have a backing track. It's that simple, all right? Don't make it more hard or difficult than it is. And again, when you have all the fancy technology and stuff, then it becomes, uh, you know, you just bring it to the next level, which I love doing. But don't feel like you need to do that. Keep it simple, have fun, and experiment with it, okay? Questions on that, all right? We're coming up on an hour. I want to finish up a couple other ideas, and I'm down to hang, but if you guys have other questions or things you want me to cover before we, we close up here for the day, let me know. But anyways, this is Quick Lick number six from the site, okay? This is one of my favorites, and this one... <laughs> All right, once again, let's just take that first lick. Uh, Frank, sometimes if you share, I guess you economy picking some of these licks. I'm having some issues with that and don't want to take your time here. Ah, awesome, buddy. That's a great lesson for me to do in the future. I'm going to be doing a lot more of these live lessons since what else are we going to be doing right now? You know, so uh, economy picking and different picking styles, I'll do a whole lesson on that. But Frank, definitely email me. If you guys have questions that you don't want to ask here, maybe you feel that like they're more in depth. Uh, you could hit me up. I answer all my own emails. Mike at Rock Guitar Power, Mike at Super Guitar Licks. You'll be able to reach me in either of those, okay? So if you have questions, you want to send them in, email me. I'm here to help you guys, all right? So economy of picking is actually a perfect point to bring up here for this lick I'm showing on screen right now. This is one of my favorites. And what we're going to do, if we just look at the first bar, it goes seven, seven, pull off and then down to seven on the A string. Now, if you look at the way I pick this, down, up, okay, I don't have the picking strokes in the tab, but if I start this and go down, up, pull off, and then up on the A string, the crucial point is down, down, pull off, up. Watch my right hand as I move. Down, up, pull off, up. Now if I start that over, down, up, pull off, up. You can see my right hand moves in kind of a circular motion. Just that first bar is a lick. It's a repetitive lick that you could practice. If you look at the next bar, it takes that same idea and moves down the pentatonic scale. Again, this is in A, or this, this, pentaton this lick is in a pentatonic minor. So now we're gonna go five on the G string. Five, five, seven, pull off to five. Again, down, up, up, pull off. So it's a little different, but again, down, it's the same picking pattern. Down, uh, oh, sorry. Down, up, up, pull off. So if I loop these two bars, what's really important is the economy of motion, the economy of picking, the down and up pattern that I'm using with my pick. Because if you try to do this in other ways, you're gonna be using a lot more movement than you need to. And that becomes a lot harder to coordinate. It becomes a lot harder to connect all your notes together. So it is a very good practice. And this is one of the elements of, you know, a more advanced um, form of playing or study is knowing what is your, your scale or what is your picking pattern look like for any given lick or any given lead line. Because if you're not doing it the most economical way or something that makes sense, 
it's gonna become infinitely harder than if you know a picky pattern that's economical and then you stick to it every single time you play it. So check it out. There's the lick. Okay, now that I go into depth in teaching this lick in that Quick Licks number six lesson, so I'm not gonna go crazy with it here. What we're gonna do is hear how it sounds over the same backing track that we've been jamming along to. All right, here it is. Let me call this up. And we're gonna listen to it over the same track and hear how it sounds. Once I get this thing going. Here we go. the lick, the backing track ends right there. All right, let's do that one more time and we're gonna play this as, um, what I have this? We're gonna play it as, I think I was, when I was really going fast, I was at 16th notes. Here's eighth notes the way it's supposed to be played. So you could hear it and you could loop it up, you could do little variations. And then of course, I could tie both of the licks we just learned to make a longer jam or a longer lead line. So check it out. And as you can tell, this new lick, it ends on A. It ends on the root of my key signature, okay? So let's tie both of those licks together over the same backing track, and you could hear how I'm just gonna do these two licks that we learned, and you can hear kind of slight variations on them. Check it out. Pretty cool. Last thing to tie this all together, let's play the same idea over a totally different backing track in a different key. And then we'll show you how if you spend time learning one lick or one solo line, you could apply it to different jam tracks or backing tracks. And when you're learning different songs, it's essentially all it is. You know, you're, you're learning a song in a different key, you're learning a different chord progression, but as long as you know that root chord progression, and you know where home base is for your minor pentatonic scale and all the licks that you know, then you could use those same licks over different songs. Okay, so let's find another one. Uh, let's do, here's, here's a fun one. So I'm gonna, let's show our site here, hang on. Okay, and I'm gonna go to this guy here. Let's go back to our backing tracks. And what we're gonna do is find the one called Funky C Minor Jam. Aha, very cool. Yeah, Mark, there's not a lot of big secrets. There's a couple, I should say, there's just a couple things you gotta do to tie in all these together, and that creates movement. That creates a paragraph, you know? You start by learning words, you start then by putting sentences together, and then you learn paragraphs. 
all right? That's soloing, all right, in, in your phrases, all right? So, funky C minor jam. So, as the name implies, we're in C minor, okay? So, I'm gonna take everything we were doing in A. Where's the note C, people? Someone write it in, type it in. Where do I find the note C on the big E string? What fret do I play that on? Someone type it in there and let me know. Eighth fret, awesome, Ricky. Good job. It was written there, but I know you knew that anyways. <coughs> so, eighth fret, if we're in C minor, we're gonna start on the eighth fret. So, let's hear this groove. Here it is. So, let's start by keeping it simple. Just play our minor pentatonic scale up and down. Let me get out of this and actually bring up our scale patterns. Actually, we're gonna go promote our shit right now. <laughs> so, I'll leave that up for the rest of this. But anyways, minor pentatonic scale, eighth fret. So, totally different groove, totally different key signature, same licks, okay? Awesome, thanks, Ricky. Again, it's not hard. Playing the faster, fancy stuff, yes, that's a little more difficult. That takes time. We'll get there. The, idea, what's the, the whole focus of this today's lesson and today's idea and concept, start simple, keep it simple, and figure out how much you could do that super fun if you just stick with the basics, all right? When you're ready to really push it, you know, learn to play at faster tempos, learn to play at double speed. In other words, if you can do something at eighth notes, work towards being able to play it at 16th notes. That's where the real energy sits, okay? All right, guys, any other questions? Uh, we're at a little over an hour here. It's been a blast. And I'm, again, so excited to do more of these. Um, I've been kind of testing out this, you know, 12 o'clock time, but I'm gonna be doing more of these since, you know, again, we're, we're kinda of all have a lot more time to kinda of just do things at home right now. So I'm gonna shoot out another one maybe during the week. And again, if you guys have other topics that you want me to cover for these types of lessons, please uh, send in your, your emails, mike at rock guitar power, mike at super guitar licks, um, and let me know what you wanna learn, all right? Economy picking, that's one of them. The next one I think I'm gonna do is actually how to create backing tracks. So. You can, you know, have fun making your own. Again, these are the things that really help you improve as a guitar player. If you're not already a member, if you want access to the more in-depth training and lessons and programs that we have, we got the special set up for you guys, superguitarlix.com forward slash promo. Uh, full access to everything on the site for 35 bucks. Uh, for Rock Guitar Power, which has programs for a little bit of everything. If you're just brand new, Volume one has just the most basic of lessons just to get you going. Uh, volume two is a little more in depth with bar chords, uh, soloing ideas, and then the rest of the programs there focus a lot on soloing and lead. 
Um, and if you go to secure purchase, forge less promo, it's a one-time fee, $97, lifetime access, no monthly fees set up for you guys. So check those out if you're interested. If you have other questions, again, reach out to me, stay tuned to that email inbox. And both of these sites have free, um, free access for, you know, a rock guitar power if you go to there and there's a free access for seven days so you can check it out. And Super Guitar Licks, if you go to the free lessons, there's a course that get you started and check that out too. But if you guys are here, you're probably already checked those out a little bit. So, Ricky, you are welcome. Um, yeah, man, we're all here for each other. You know, I'm here to help make this more fun for everybody. And again, we got to make the most of this. And why not just sit here and have fun, write music, play your guitars, get better at it. So with that, I'm going to go, uh, go for a walk and, and get out of the studio for a minute and then get right back to playing some guitar. Have fun, have fun everybody. We'll talk to you guys soon. And uh, thank you all for hanging out. All right, we'll see you. And um, by the way, there is going to be a replay of this. I'll email it out to you guys when it's all set up. So if you want to rewatch any of this, it'll be on my YouTube channel. And you could go back and rewatch any of this stuff to really kind of get in depth. And I'll put links to all the other stuff. So, all right, guys, later.